Hi, I figure I'd do an introduction first. My name is Ying. I'm a mother of two to two amazing kids. One is three and one is five. I have an amazing husband who has been very supportive of me in taking on this journey as a new content creator on YouTube. Now I have a choice. I can go out there and find another nine to five job, but is it going to be easy to find something that's going to be flexible with my kids' schedule? I don't know. And so I started thinking about my options out there. What can I find that, you know, will give me that flexibility, but also something that I really enjoyed and love doing? So when I thought about making this video, I thought, hey, why not make it a series? But a daily series wouldn't work because I just wouldn't have enough data and that's kind of boring. So I thought, Okay, how about I do a monthly series? Because by then I would have had four videos out each month because that's my goal, one video per week. And so I think I would have enough analytics to show you if there's any growth of my channels in both views and subscribers. And I would be able to tell you what things I've done differently this month or what I've learned this month, what I found that was challenging and all that sort of information that I think would be helpful because that's something I was looking for that I just couldn't find. I was actually thinking about scripting this video, but then I said, hey, this should be raw in its rawest form because I'm a new content creator talking to other new content creators just like me and maybe even other people who are thinking about taking this journey. So before publishing my first video, I did what I'm sure a lot of you did, which is first Google some information. I also looked into some YouTube channels to see if I can find any helpful information there or if there were any helpful tips that I could find. And while I found most of it helpful, the one thing I couldn't find was the very early on stages. How many views is considered good on your first video? I was getting about 30 views, I think for my first two days, and I wasn't sure if that was good or not. Another thing was how many subscribers did I get on that first video? Getting subscribers was even harder to get. I know there's a lot of videos that says don't do this for money. And I agree, don't do anything that doesn't make you happy or that you don't enjoy it because you're just gonna hate it and you're gonna quit. But I do want to say, I'm not looking to blow up, but I also want to be clear. I do want to make a decent living, which means I do want to be monetized. So how long is it going to take for me to get monetized? And that's all going to depend on how soon you're going to hit that YouTube requirement, which is that 1,000 subscriber and 4,000 watch hours. So I decided to become a content creator towards the end of June. And so some of my interest is that I love anything that's in the creative space. I do enjoy problem solving and learning new things. I thought about the last time I enjoyed something and it was actually when I started my uh, YouTube Kids channel for my daughter. It was during the pandemic. She was watching a lot of YouTube, just one of those toy review channels. And I wanted her to watch something that was educational. So what I did was I took some classes on Skillshare on how to use Final Cut Pro because I wasn't sure how long this pandemic will last. I was really happy with the way the video turned out. It was my first time making one. It took a lot of time and effort, but the end result was that my kids really enjoyed it and that's what mattered. And even to this day, they even asked Hey mommy, can I watch Giggle Dabble? So yes, my channel is called Giggle Dabble and if you are interested in taking a look at my very first video, I'll link it above here. Things started getting better and the kids were back in school. My regular full-time job started getting busier. And so what makes me happy is that to this day, my kids still ask me to put on the Giggle Dabble show. And I think that was all worth it. And so when I look back at that time, I thought, why not create a YouTube channel for myself and make that a full-time gig for me? So I went over the details with my husband. He gave me the green light. I told him, hey, it's going to take me a long time before I get monetized. I may have to work late hours. And I told him, you may have to pick up some of the house workload or the workload around the kids. And he said, hey, whatever makes you happy. And so that's my motivation right there. I'm gonna keep working on my channel, be try my very best and just hope that everything works out. So let's talk about how things are going. I've already published five videos. This will be my sixth video once you see this. To get my first video published, it took a little while for me to get everything set up. I had to look for my old cameras, test to see if it works, check to see if I still have the old batteries or if I need new batteries. I couldn't find my tripod, so I had to buy a new one. But what other YouTubers has mentioned is, 
you just need to put out your first video and that is so true I mean my first video was just horrendous I feel but I think as I put out more videos I just felt a little bit more comfortable and I also felt more prepared in knowing what to say in front of the camera I actually wrote a script for my first video and I think that was very helpful in helping me become more focused even though I appear awkward in this video but I do feel there's an improvement each time I release a new content and what I have to say to you is that you really need to put out that first video and then just keep putting video after video after video out and that's the only way you're gonna see what works for your channel and what doesn't work now I'm not sure if this is true because my journey is only a little bit over a month but they said that you have to put out videos consistently while I do believe that would help I'm not sure if that would actually trigger the algorithm but here are two things I can tell you I have been putting out videos once a week and each time I do see that there's an improvement in the number of views in a short span of time but then I also have been putting a variety of different types of content so I'm not sure if the number of views has increased because I put out videos consistently or if it's because I put different types of content or if some contents works better than others I'm really not sure but we'll see in series number two in the next month I also want to say if you're just starting out like me, give yourself a little grace because many of us are working from home. It's so different than working in an office environment. There you have people to engage with. You may have a boss who you have to report to. But at home, there's no one watching you. It's so easy to get distracted. There may not be a lot of motivation. In the beginning, I became very obsessive with always checking my view count, always checking to see how many subscribers I received. I spent so much time on my phone, constantly refreshing my screen to see if there were any changes in my views or if I received any new subscribers. It was just such a complete waste of time. So it really affected my second video, but I'm just gonna call it like it is. I got lazy. But I had an image in my mind and the story I wanted to tell and what I wanted to film. But as I was editing the film, I was not happy with the way it came out. And you can see from my number of views compared to my other videos, this video did not do well. But you'll just have to keep powering through because that's life. Life is gonna throw you a whole bunch of curveballs. You're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna get lazy, you're gonna need a reset. What I'm getting at is that you need to give yourself a little grace and be patient and know that this is going to be a long journey. I know many YouTubers will tell you that you need to hustle, you need to work late hours at night, but you also need to take care of yourself. When I put my kids down, it can take anywhere from 10.30 or until 11 p.m. at night for them to fall asleep. But I come back downstairs and I work on my videos till maybe about 1 a.m. And that's my threshold because I have to wake up and drive my kids to school. And it's so dangerous to drive when you haven't gotten a restful night of sleep. Do you want to take that risk? And what I have to say is that while I'm with my family all the time, I'm finding myself I'm not present with them. For example, when my husband speaks to me or even my kids, I hear them, I hear their voice, but it's not really sinking in. And that really makes me sad and that's one of the toughest part of this journey in the beginning. But I am going to create a schedule for myself so I know where these are the days I'm going to film, these are the days that I'm going to edit, and these are the times. So when I started this channel, I didn't tell any of my friends or family. I only told my husband and maybe just one friend and that's it. And the reason why I didn't tell certain people is because I didn't want people's opinion, meaning I didn't want any negativity, I didn't want to feel discouraged. And two, I wanted to see how I was progressing as a content creator, if my content is even good enough. And when I did my YouTube Kids channel, I basically told most of my friends and they were pretty much my main subscribers. So for this channel, I currently have 23 subscribers. Only 4 out of the 23 subscribers that I have currently are my real friends. So I feel pretty proud of that. As far as my work process and getting things set up like the equipment, the filming, the editing, all of that I feel is getting a little bit better. Each time you do it, it just becomes faster because everything becomes so familiar to you. And that's why you need to be consistent in creating content because it's just going to help you out in the long run. Everything is just going to be a lot smoother and easier for you. So being consistent is key. I'm also starting to figure out what works for me in terms of my flow of work. And by that, I mean 
My husband works from home three times out of the week. So I know don't film on those days because he's on conference calls and I don't want to pick up the background noise. So what I do on those days is I either script, I plan, or I edit. In terms of organization, for me it's still a bit of a mess. In terms of my schedule, yes I'm working on it. But in terms of where I'm storing certain things like equipment or files, that sort of thing I still need to actually figure out. But let me know how you guys organize things on your end because I just haven't had the time to and it's just driving me nuts. Things are just everywhere and I feel like I'm just wasting a lot of time looking for things. So that concludes this video. Hope you found this helpful and hope you follow me and we can take this journey together as new content creators. And just as a reminder to put out there as any other content creator, make sure to hit that notification bell so that you get that alert when series number two comes out. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you get that alert of when series number one, part two, will come out, which will include my analytics and more. And uh, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.